Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of refining your book layout. So swapping and adding photos, removing photos, moving pages, deleting and adding pages, etc. Now I've started here with an auto layout. So Lightroom has generated the first draft of this book. Now I've also saved this book so that I know that as I work on it, all of my changes are being saved. Now the auto layout preset that I used is left blank, right one photo. You don't have to use auto layout at all. You can click on clear layout and just design your book from scratch here, adding pages, dragging in photos, etc. And everything I'm going to cover in this video applies in either case. Now I'm going to do Ctrl or Command Z to undo that clear that I did. So you can do Ctrl or Command Z once or as many times as you need to to back up in the steps that you've done. So the first thing I want to show you how to do is how to swap photos and add new photos to your book. So let's say, for example, scroll down a little bit more, that I want this photo and this one to be swapped. I'll simply click inside this photo and I'll drag and drop it on this other page. So Lightroom just swaps the two photos. If you don't want to swap two photos, but you just want to change this photo out for something in the film strip, then you can just come down to the film strip here and drag it up to that spot. So I'll take this photo here and I'm going to drag from within the photo thumbnail. If I drag from the gray border here in the film strip, nothing's going to happen. So I'll drag from the image thumbnail and I'll drop it on this page. So that photo gets replaced. Now when I did that, the other photo didn't get moved anywhere else. It's simply been taken out of my book design. If I scroll over here in the scroll bar, make this a little bit bigger, you'll see that that photo that used to be there doesn't have a number on top here, meaning that it's not being used in the book at this point. On the other hand, this other photo that I just dragged up here is now being used on two different pages. So if I drag up from the film strip, I want to check these numbers and make sure I don't have it in, on two pages. And if I do, I need to go find that other version of it and remove it. Now let's say that the photo I want to put on this page is not actually in my collection yet. I can't find it. I thought I added it to the collection, but I didn't. So I need to go back to the library module and find another photo and add it to this book collection. So I'm going to go back to the library module here and I'll go into my coast folder here and I'll just find something very quickly. I'll take this one. I'm going to scroll down here to the collections panel. What I want to do if I've already saved my book, so I'm working with a saved book, I want to drag the photo into my saved book collection here. Not my original Coast Photos collection that I put together to start out this project, but the saved book. If I haven't yet saved my book in the book module, then I would just drag it to the collection that I was working on. Now I'm going to go back to my saved book, and a handy way to get back there is just to click on this arrow here next to my saved book. It jumps me right back to the book module into this book again. And here's this photo that's now been added to my book collection here. Now I can come down. I wanted to put it on this page. So I'll click and drag from inside the thumbnail. I'll drop it on that page. So I've got that page in the book. And I can see that none of the photos are being used twice, except this one, which is also on the front cover. OK, so that's how you would add photos into your book. Click and drag to swap, or click and drag from the film strip. Now, if you wanted to delete a photo, let's say that I actually, if I scroll up here, for the sake of example, let's say I want this front page here, page number one, to be a blank page. What I would do is simply right click in the photo and say remove photo. Now you're probably hearing me say right click a lot because as usual in Lightroom, if you're in doubt about how to do something, you can probably get there by right clicking. But let me just throw in that you have to be careful that you're right clicking in the right place. When you have a page format, that has a photo cell and a text cell and some blank space on the page, right clicking in those various areas is going to give you different choices. So I'll remove that photo. Now when I remove that photo, I get this indicator, this gray square with a plus in it, that this is a photo page. This page is formatted to accommodate a photo. 
However, I don't have to have a photo on the page. It won't print gray like this. If I scroll down to the guide section here and I turn off the photo cell guides, and why don't I go ahead and turn off all the guides, you'll see how the page will actually print with nothing on it. So I'll turn these back on. Now I want to get the photo back on this page. So I can simply come down to the film strip and drag it back in. Okay, now that we've talked about how to move photos around, let's talk about how to move pages around. I'm going to collapse the film strip here so we have a little bit more room. And let's say that I want this page to be further down. To do that, I'm not going to click in the page. That would move the photo if I started dragging. So to do something with a page, I'm going to select the page by clicking below it, by clicking in the page number area. That gives me this tab, and I can click and drag the tab to move the page. Gives me a nice orange line so that I know that I've got it in the right place, and then I can let go. And then, of course, I can take page three here, click in the tab, and drag this down as well. If you want to move multiple pages at once, you can click in the first and then shift, click on the last if they're all in a row. So let's go ahead and move this whole set down here. Then we can deselect these pages by just clicking in the gray. If you want to move pages that are not next to each other all at once, or do anything really with pages that are not next to each other, you'll click in the first, hold the control or command key as you click in the additional pages. Then you could simply click and drag to move those three pages. Now I've decided in this particular book that I really don't want this last page at all. I don't want to just remove the photo. I don't need these pages. So I'm going to select page 48 and then hold the shift key down, select page 49, and then as usual I'll right click and I'll say remove pages. Now let's say that I want to add a page towards the beginning here. I don't want to start moving all these photos and pages around. I just want to add one more page in here because I have another photo that I want to be number two here. So I'm going to select page one because I want this to come after page one. And I can either click on add page or add blank here in the page panel. So add blank will add a blank page. Add page will add a page with the current format. In other words, with this, this one photo format that I have going. So I'll click on add blank. Now I've thrown off my layout, of course. My photos are on the wrong side. So I want to add a photo page in between these two blank pages. So it's going to come after page two. So page two is selected. So I'll click on add page. Notice that it still remembers that this is the kind of page that it's going to add. It's the last format that I've used. Click on add page. Now I've got the photo cell page here. Come down to the film strip. See if I've got a photo that I haven't used at this point. Click and drag it up to that page. Now before I conclude this video, I want to talk a little bit more about zooming to fit and zooming to fill. So I'm going to select this page here and go to single page view. And let's just say for the sake of example that I'm thinking this might look better with the photo filling the entire page. So I can right click in the photo and choose zoom photo to fill the cell. And then of course I can click and drag to decide which part of the photo is being cropped off. Now once I click in a photo cell, I get this zoom slider here. So this allows me first to completely back off of zooming to fill the cell or to zoom in even further on the photo. Now when you're zooming in, you're enlarging the photo. And you can imagine you get to a point where you're not going to get a good quality print. And in fact, as you slide this slider, you get to a point where Lightroom says, hey, wait a minute, I don't think you should do this. And that's what this little exclamation point is. So if I click on the exclamation point, it tells me that I don't have enough pixels per inch to meet what it's recommending as the minimum that I go with. Now when this book gets output to blurb, it's going to be output at 300 pixels per inch. So when it's saying the minimum recommended resolution is 200 pixels per inch, it's already making up a lot of pixels. It's already enlarging the photos. So if your photo just meets the minimum of 200 pixels per inch, 
you can see that it's still going to be making up a lot of information. It's going to be enlarging your photo a lot to get up to 300 pixels per inch. As a result, to continue to compromise beyond that gets risky, particularly this low. Now I could simply ignore this exclamation point and say that I'm willing to go with this, but I do feel that this recommendation of not going below 200 pixels per inch is a very solid recommendation and I do try to stick with this. So I'll click in the photo and I'll just choose not to zoom in that far. Now if you're wondering how many pixels per inch your photo is currently at, you have to know the secret key and that's the hold down the alt or the option key. When you hold down the alt or the option key, this zoom percentage changes to pixels per inch. Now, if you're designing not a blurb book, but a PDF or a series of JPEGs, Lightroom's not going to give you that warning because it doesn't know for sure that you're going to print at 300 pixels per inch. You may be fine with very low resolution photos because you're not going to be printing out a book. You're just going to be sharing it on screen. So what I'd recommend is that if you are creating a PDF to be published as a book or to be printed at significant size, that you design your book in blurb book mode and then at the end switch it to PDF. Alternatively, you just have to remember to click on your photos, alter option, and understand and make sure that they're of high enough resolution. Okay, I'm going to go back to blurb here, go back to multi-page spread, and I'll click in the photo and take the zoom ratio down, go back to just fitting the cell. All right. In the next video, I'm going to talk about changing page layouts.